Hi everyone, in this lecture today we are going to talk about forwarding in datagram networks. Now the internet is an example of a datagram network and the routers in the internet do not contain state about end-to-end -end connections. In fact, in the, at the network level there is no concept of a connection. The connect, uh, concept of connection is mainly logical and it is mainly in the transport layer. So how do packets get forwarded in a datagram network? So packets get forwarded using the destination's host address. So so for example, this uh, host here wants to send some packets to this destination here. What it does is it puts it in its address as well as address of the destination and the datagrams get forwarded in the network using the destination's host address. So let's take a look at how the datagrams actually get forwarded. So every router in the, in the network maintains a table called the datagram forwarding table. Now the table looks somewhat like this as is shown in this green box here. What it has is one of the columns is the datagram address and the, the other column is the output link to which this <clears throat> corresponding to that datagram address. So for example, if, if a packet comes into this router here and its destination address say belongs to address range one, then the packet is going to be sent along, uh, sent along output link two, three. If, it's, if it comes in and belongs to a destination address range 2, the, the corresponding output link is going to be 2. Okay, but the, th but the thing is, we have to maintain address ranges and we cannot keep individual IP, pack, uh, IP addresses. That's because the number of hosts in the internet is really large. In fact, it's a few billion and keeping a list of the billion hosts in the, in the internet is not just possible. So we, there has to be a smarter way through which uh, routers actually keep, keep track of which, uh, uh, ad <clears throat> which destination, uh, sorry, which, de which packets have routed along which, um, which interface. So the datagram forwarding table can look somewhat like this. So what happens is all addresses within this particular range, as specified by this example here, are forwarded along link zero, everything within and this particular address range shown by the uh, the circling mouse are forward to link one and <clears throat> and similarly there's address range for link two any other any other address is um, any other packet with the destination address falling outside these three ranges is actually forwarded along link interface three so how do we write this mathematically so how does like this is it has got this word through here so how does this router actually store this information so if you look at the previous slide, you would notice that, say, if you consider link interface 0, the first 21 bits here are exactly the same. These, uh, the two addresses differ in the last uh, 8 plus 3, 11 bits. Okay, so the first 21 bits are the same and the difference is in the last 11 bits. So, when you can write it in this form, we, the, the, the bits that are common are represented and then there's a star for the bits that are to represent the address range and then there is a corresponding link zero now when a packet comes in to a router it's forwarded using the destination's address and using longest address prefix match so what does the longest address prefix match actually mean so let's consider an example here so the first example is given here and you will see that there is a there is a match the match is <clears throat> is with this particular destination address corresponding to link zero. So you can see that the first 21 bits actually mass match the destination address of link zero corresponding to link zero. So this packet with this destination address is going to be forwarded along link zero. Now let's consider the second uh, address. You would see that there is a match. The first 21 bits actually match here with the <coughs> with address range shown in for link two. But then if you look more closely, you would see that the, uh, this particular address also has a match with, with the address range specified across for link, for link one. So there are multiple matches here. Now, when there are multiple matches, the, the packet is going to be forwarded along that particular interface for which there is a longest address prefix match. So for example, in this particular example, uh, in this particular case, for the second uh, address, there is matches for uh, the uh, address range in across for link one, 
and for the address range for link uh, two. As the uh, as we are looking at the longest prefix address, and the match is for twenty four bits for link one, and there is only two match of twenty one bits for link two. Where the packet is going to be forwarded along link one. So longest prefix matching is a very important concept to which the packets are forwarded in the internet, and uh, and it is something that you should keep in mind when. <clears throat> When you're deciding how uh, which interface a packet is going to be forwarded along okay with that uh, i would end this uh, lecture thank you